Project Borough is now available as a podcast on your chosen podcast providers, so you can listen to every episode on the go. Simply go to the description of this video, click the link to the podcast provider of your choice, and subscribe or follow Project Borough, and you'll be able to find all episodes past, present, and future right there for you to listen to on the go. Borough's run in the League Cup comes to an end in pretty nightmarish fashion. He's in. And he snuck it across to Hayden Hutney! What is up guys, Matthew here and welcome to another episode of Project Borough and uh, well all I'm going to say is I'm going to keep this one short and sweet today because um, Borough's incredible run in the League Cup which led us all the way to that famous incredible night at the Riverside which I'll never ever forget and gave us a lead heading in to the second leg where we were 90 minutes away from a League Cup final and a major cup final which now that we're out of the bubble of the semi-final and the dreaming of what could be Borough were 90 minutes away from something, I think, in today's game that is rather unprecedented. So, yeah, it's it's a shame that it's come to an end. I think it's more a shame that it's come to an end in the fashion that it did. No one expected us to win. I didn't expect us to win. We all lived in hope that we could pull off a modern-day miracle. But on the night, Borough didn't turn up. Tactics were all wrong. I think we were missing key components of our game plan which worked so well in the first leg and was never going to work tonight and we got absolutely walloped 6-1 by Chelsea and listen I'm not I'm not going to bash the boys too much if this was in the league of course then you'd be a lot more angry and upset I'm not going to go absolutely crazy on the on the boys and, and lambast them and destroy them for this defeat. I think there is obviously a massive, massive degree of disappointment by how we've lost. And at times, it was rather embarrassing and tough to watch. But to get to this stage, face a Chelsea side who on the night had their shooting boots on, unlike the first leg, there's no shame in getting to a semi-final and taking it all the way to the second leg away at the Premier League side and falling at that hurdle but yeah the big thing and what I said pre-game and I've thought this throughout the entire build-up is that the big important thing for Borough was we had to survive the first half an hour we had to survive the first 45 minutes we had to keep breaking the games that the two-legged affair up in quarters with a 45 minute sort of checkpoints and we had to get to the first 45 minutes still in the tie even if Chelsea score we're still in the tie it's still a level game but the worry always was if they score early the floodgates could open and they opened big time because Borough could only keep Chelsea out for 15 minutes and you know what the the really sort of bittersweet thing is Borough actually started the better of the two we actually started really well we looked pretty good on the ball bit nervy you'd understand that Chelsea obviously pressing very aggressively so it wasn't a wasn't easy for the boys but I thought we settled quite well in the first 10 minutes and you know we we, we looked good in our shape we looked a lot more comfortable and settled than Chelsea and, and Gary Neville was saying in commentary Borough We'd settled much better than what the home side did. But it was one moment of poor defending that led to the whole thing falling apart. And it's a recurring theme, unfortunately, from what happened tonight. And it's a bit like the first leg with the chances we gave Chelsea. The big, sad, really disappointing thing for me is not that we lost 6-1, as bad and as horrible as it is. It's the fact that we handed Chelsea the chances and the opportunities once again. They didn't have to play incredible top quality football to carve through Borough. We assisted in our downfall massively and unlike the first leg, we didn't get away with it. So despite the great start, 
we were undone, 15 minutes in, Chilwell cut in from the inside, put a through ball in behind Borough's left hand side and I mean the defensive line was about as straight as an oval you could say because Engel way too far forward, Clark in the middle, Fry way too deep, the back four was all over the shop, no communication, no one keeping the line, no one trying to you know, if we're going to play offside, we all push up together. If we don't, we all drop off. They were all doing individual things. And Engel stepped up, had two men by his left-hand side on the on the overlap. In behind was Raheem Sterling. He opted to square it. Bit of bad luck, you could say. I think, was it Enzo Fernandez who was about to tap it home? Housen took it off his shin and ended up putting it into the back of his own net via his attempted interception. And that was when you thought, right, this is tough now. You know, the longer the game went on, and it stayed as it was, Borough ahead on aggregate, Chelsea would have gotten more desperate. Their fans would have got more anxious. Their fans would have gotten on their back. Borough had to frustrate. We had to prolong the game. We had to drag it. We had to make it dirty. We had to make it frustrating and tough and horrible for Chelsea. Make it a toxic, desperate atmosphere. And see how far we could get. Not concede 15 minutes in. And that settled the fans down. It settled the Chelsea players down. It, it took away any toxicity or anxiety in the home team and the home crowd. And after that, it was just attack versus defence. Borough could not get up the pitch. As I mentioned, one of the big, big things that benefited us in the home leg was one hour formation. And I'll talk about this when I discuss the Borough team. And the pace and the out ball and the outlet we had, especially Isaiah Jones down the right. Without that, Borough would pick up the ball, we'd play it backwards, we'd play it sideways, and then we'd get rid of it. We'd give it back to Chelsea, and then the whole thing would start again. There was just never, apart from a few brief moments, where I thought we looked like we were going to string even a couple of passes together. We were, either, we were ever going to make much of a threat. Because we just didn't have the pace, we didn't have the, the out ball, we didn't have the running in behind. I think if we had Lath, if we had Jones, Bangura, down the left with Engel tucking in as a left centre-back, if we'd have had them players available, I think we might have had more of a chance in that really crucial period in the first half. As it happens, when one went in, a second followed. And this was probably Chelsea's best worked goal of the night, I would say. Good play down the right-hand side. Crosses cut back from the right. Johnny Housen leaves Enzo Fernandez free, who he'd man marked pretty much all the way up until that point. <clears throat> Enzo peeled back, had a free effort. On goal, six yards out, whatever it was, puts it in the back of the net, 2 1. For me, that was it. I thought, you know, game over. Chelsea are ahead in the tie. It would have took something special for Borough. To, to, to claw it back from there. And if I'd have maybe saw signs that we at least were going to pose some threat going forward, I may have thought there's still a chance for us to claw something back, but we didn't offer anything going the other way. It was just a matter of time before Chelsea got another and another and another, and they got a third on the 36th minute mark. And this was, again, from Borough's own making. Trying to play the ball out from the back. Clark plays it to Hackney. Dezassi reads it, presses well, wins the ball high up the pitch. Suddenly there's a an a counter attack where Borough are outnumbered. Good play on the right hand side once again. Cross to Dezassi who finished well. Once again it got worse in the 42nd minute. Once again Borough continuing to try and play our own style, our own way of playing out from the back. It clearly wasn't working. Chelsea had worked us out. We weren't quick enough. We weren't sharp enough our heads had gone as well so we just were all over the shop at this point and i don't think anyone quite knew what they were doing because barlassa played it into hackney who was not expecting the pass hackney then played it back to barlassa who didn't seem to expect the pass back either it was intercepted and cole palmer had the easiest finish into the corner and he didn't make a mistake like he did in the first leg and it was 4-0 after 42 minutes and this was when Borough were in damage limitation time. This was when it was a uh, right. This is getting pretty pretty brutal now. Let's let's just not make an absolute fool of ourselves. Because I would have accepted Borough getting beat by Chelsea. I mean, who wouldn't? It, it's it's it, there's no shame in that as long as we didn't get a real beating and it 
mostly be our own doing and unfortunately my worst nightmares and my worst case scenario was was completely there in front of me and although Borough were able to keep Chelsea out for the most of the second half we still continued to try and play out from the back we still tried to stick to our principles and I guess maybe because we were so far behind why not what's the worst that can happen but Chelsea kept getting presented with opportunities. It could have been more, let's be honest. But Palmer added another on the 77th minute. This time they played the ball down the left-hand side. Got down the side of Vandenberg. Crossed the ball into Palmer, who was in so much space. And once again, no one round him. Didn't make the mistake this time. And it was a very good finish into the right-hand corner. And then on the 81st minute, four minutes later, it was six. This time it came from the other side. Madawicki cutting in on his left foot and bending one into the corner as it was deflected in 6-0. It was by that point and thankfully at least the travelling fans got something to take home with them because Morgan Rogers and I'm not going to single him out, I'm not going to single any Borough player out, they all struggled, they all had a tough night. But the man who of course has all the spotlight shined on at the moment with Aston Villa wanting his services and, and I, I'm going to boldly predict this might be the last time we see Morgan Rogers in a Borough shirt. At least if it is, he signed off in style, carrying the ball forward into Chelsea's half, cutting it into his right foot and bending it beautifully into the corner in front of the Borough fans, which at least gave the 4,000 travelling lot something to celebrate, something to take home. And what I will say is the Borough fans were outstanding. You know, it doesn't matter if it was 1-0, 2-0, 6-0. The Borough fans were incredible. They were the winners tonight for me. They kept singing. They kept singing and chanting and, and cheering the team on. You know what? I said this about the Chelsea fans in the first leg. It's not sour grapes at all. But they were really bad in the first leg. Giving it was a home game and they were on the brink of making a final. It was like a library in that ground. Which I guess maybe shows how used to these big teams are at just making another final which takes the magic away from it you know if the shoe was on the other foot the riverside would have literally been crumbling with people singing and joyously dancing and, and celebrating this was just sad really to see that chelsea had made another final and you it may as well have been a third a third round tie from what you could tell by the atmosphere the borough fans were the loudest the proudest sang the boys home all the way until the end and were a real credit to the club, the town, and everyone associated with Middlesbrough Football Club. And we might not have a billion pounds, we might not have money coming from a different country, we might not be owned by a billionaire, and we might not be owned by a state, but what we do have is an incredible loyal fan base who love the borough through and through, and um, that was the positive I took from this tonight. Summing up the performance, yeah, as I say, I wasn't expecting Borough to win, but the one thing I wanted to take away from the result is that we gave it our best shot, we gave a good account of ourselves, and we at least made Chelsea work for it. That was the disappointing thing for me. We didn't make Chelsea work for it. We gave them goal after goal after goal, really, really shambolic defending, losing our composure completely, and, yeah, just not turning up unfortunately and, and yeah you can maybe say it's a big occasion you can argue it was always going to be tough I get that but it does again really really highlight Borough's defensive frailties you know the stats before the game were showing how tight games are at the Riverside how close they are at the Riverside and yet away from home it's like we just create this basketball game where we score quite a few but we also concede a lot on the road and I feel like that's something we have to try and look to work on because say what you will yes the gap between the Premier League and the Championship is big this has shown exactly what can happen and I saw quite a few people tweeting there were more neutral fans I think who were saying the gap between the Championship is bigger than ever you know, between the Premier and the Championship this is a worry for English football you know how are teams going to ever come up and compete and I get that to an extent but I will say Chelsea did not have to play anywhere near their best here and Borough assisted them in the victory. Tactically, it was completely wrong by Carrick. Team selection, formation, completely wrong. And yet, we, were help we weren't helped by injuries and we missed out, I think, some of our most important assets in a game like this. But still, 
yeah, the tactics, the setup, were all wrong. And I'll get onto the team in a bit. You know what? We, it would have been, as I said, something incredibly special for Borough to reach the final. We'd have been the first team outside of the Premier League in 11 years to reach the League Cup final. And the fact that the last 10 seasons have been competed by two teams from the same league maybe does show that the gulf is getting bigger between the Premier League and the Championship. But out of all of the last, I think it might have been 11 teams from lower than the Premier League who made it into a League Cup semi-final and led, only two were able to hold on to that lead and get through. Sheffield Wednesday, I want to say, in the early 90s. And Bradford, who were the last team to, to get to this point outside of the Premier League in 2013, I think it was. So, yeah, the odds were against us, maybe now more than ever, given the gulf between the two leagues. But Borough certainly didn't help themselves. And it would have took something miraculous tonight for us to get the job done. And sadly, our League Cup journey comes to an end. But what an experience it was, and it did give us that incredible night at the Riverside, which is something I'll never, ever forget. Looking at the team then, and I'm not going to run through the team one by one because they all had very, very difficult nights out there. As you can see, some of the ratings that were dropped were probably some of the worst ratings you'll see. And as you can also see by Footmob and how it's arranged the Borough team, we were all over the place tonight. Um, we were a back five sometimes, a back four others. And we were trying to fight Chelsea with basically players playing completely out of position. You know, I'm not too sure what Carrick was trying to do. He mentioned before the game that, you know, we, we weren't... I think when he was interviewed by Gary Neville, Gary Neville asked him if he was playing a five at the back or a four at the back. And Carrick said there was no strict formation. There was no number to it. It was all about players blocking certain spaces. So I don't think we were playing a specific formation. I think we were trying to man mark specific Chelsea threats and try and put players in certain spaces and uh, we're trying to match up Housen and Barlasser with Fernandes and Caicedo which was never going to work obviously we played with a five uh, four at the back rather than a five Housen would kind of drop into a back five but that then left huge gaps in the midfield it, it was a mess to be honest with you I mean I don't know what Carrick was experimenting on but it didn't work at all I think we should have tried to at least maintain the same tactic to what worked in the first leg. I know we didn't have Isaiah Jones, who was a massive miss. I know, I guess, we didn't have that focal point up front that we may have missed with Josh Corburn not playing in this game. But nevertheless, Carrick tried something completely different in left field and it couldn't have failed more. You know, we had Ravit right back, who he can do a good job there against decent opposition, but he's much better in a back three, a, you know, as a centre back in a back five. He got really, really, um, he was put under a lot of trouble by Mudrick down the left-hand side. Housen was neither here or there, really. You know, he, he was losing Enzo Fernandes at times. Then he was marking him, then he wasn't, so he would leave him free in midfield and then try and pick him up later on towards our goal. It was just a bit weird. Um, and Engel struggled on the, the left-hand side because he didn't really have a left wing back to help him either. Up front, like I said... We didn't have anyone in behind to get us up the pitch like a Jones or, you know, Rogers was a good ball carrier, but there was nothing up top that would help the ball stick or at least get us up the pitch like a Lattie Lathwood, for example. So I think we maybe tried to fight fire with fire, tried to do something a little bit too clever and um, it, it, it didn't work. It backfired terribly. And, and what I would have done in hindsight, and hindsight's all well and good, I know, but... I would have adopted exactly the same tactic that Borough did in the first leg just to get us to half time and then we see what we can do after that. You know, Carrick said pretty much that we were here to win the game and I think sometimes managers come out and say that just because they feel like they have to say that but I generally feel like Carrick sort of come out with that kind of mentality that we can, we can maybe fight fire with fire a bit and do something a bit clever but Chelsea have got too much quality their coaching staff are too clever, their players are too clever, and they worked us out instantly. They worked at our press instantly, and the midfield just completely got overrun. The fullbacks got overrun, and it all became a bit of a nightmare. So the, I'm not even going to bother looking at the stats, as you can see. Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. Ooh, I sound like the fans chanting Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. That's the only chant they know as well. Chelsea! Chelsea! Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. Chelsea. Our XG 
was quite high, ours was low, as you'd expect. One to forget, but what I will say and what we can learn from this is that we do need to be better defensively in the league. We do need, I think, more composure at times like this. I'm hoping it can just be a, a real learning curve for us going into the championship, which is our full focus now. And we'll see what we can do for the rest of the season and, and hopefully push for, per, uh, for playoffs. But what, what this result has also, I guess, showed me is that in order to get promoted and compete, we have a lot of work to do. And I think a lot of Borough fans who've maybe not quite saw that or maybe just assumed that we should get promoted this season and everything will be fine, this kind of makes you stop and think, OK, this is the start of maybe something a bit more long term. You know, maybe the players we've gotten aren't going to be good enough this season to get us up, as we maybe saw tonight. They're not quite towards the standard required yet. We need another season in the Championship after this. We need another year of strengthening and, and, and bolstering our squad. And maybe if Borough were to go up this year, we'd need a spectacular transfer window to stay up because we've seen how much Burnley, Luton and Sheffield United are struggling this season. And I think if Borough and the side we've got now and the players we've got now and the young squad we're assembling were to go up this season, it might be a really ugly outcome if we were to go up in this current state maybe this just gives borough fans that little bit of reassurance that if we don't go up this year it's actually okay because we, we could probably do with that extra year we could probably do with another year of development another year of strengthening and prep uh, preparing in our tank before we were to go up to the, to the premier league because if we were to go up and most weeks would be like this it would be a very miserable time and it would get very very boring and very very ugly very very quickly so maybe that just gives us a bit of perspective as to where we actually are as a football club and the work we've got to do in front of us but next up it's arguably a bigger game because not only is it a championship game but it is the Teeswear derby at home to Sunderland always a big game for the fans one you don't want to lose and Borough of course beat Sunderland 4-0 last time out so we would love to do the double on the Mackhams and we are side by side in the championship table so it would be big for either side to beat the other and I'm hoping by then of course it's 11 days away February will have begun the January transfer window will be over any doubts surrounding Borough's players will be gone any possible new signings might be back and hopefully we might see Seni Dieng a bit closer Jones might be back Lath might be back Bangura might be back and I don't know when McGree and Silvera get back from the Asian Cup, but they might be back too, who knows. But that's it, guys, for this episode of Project Borough. It was not the one I was hoping to give you guys. And even in defeat, I would have liked it to have been a little less... I don't know if embarrassing is the right word. I don't know if that's fair, but not as brutal. And we would have at least gave a better showing of ourselves in a game like this. But it wasn't to be. It kind of went as badly as it could have and at least now we've got 11 days to really get it out of our system and turn focus fully back to the priority which is the championship and I'll be back on the 4th of February to hopefully review a tease we at Derby victory from the Borough and I'll probably try and bring you some other content in between now and then as we have got a chunky gap between games but that's it if you've enjoyed this video do hit the like button and subscribe here on YouTube for much more I review every Borough game make Borough related content and other football related content too subscribe if you haven't already as I say and leave me a comment below whether you're a Borough Chelsea or neutral fan with your thoughts and if you're listening to me over on the podcast providers give me a like a rating and a follow over there but until next time guys a big thank you for watching Borough's League Cup campaign ended in a bit of a nightmare, but we've always got that one night at the Riverside where we beat Chelsea in the first leg. So here's to that and the incredible Borough fans that travelled up the Borough.